Good morning class. I'm going to do notes a little bit differently today, so uh, I am interested in your opinion. So when you submit your homework to me today, tell me which method you like better. The method I'm going to do today, uh, putting my computer on the screen, or me in front of the whiteboard. All right, so let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about uh, surface area of rectangular prisms surface area of rectangular prisms. Let's first do a little bit of review here over what these three are here. But the perimeter is the distance around a figure. If you were to walk around the room, what would be, how far would you walk, right? So it's the sum of all the sides. And the area is the space inside of a two-dimensional two figure. Okay, your two-dimensional figures would be like a rectangle, the triangle we've studied, and a trapezoid. Those are the three that we've studied. And the volume is, again, the space inside. However, today, though, we're going to be discussing a three-dimensional figure. And a three-dimensional figure has a base, and it has a base height, and it has a prism height, okay? And so the prism is what makes it different than a area, a two-dimensional figure, okay? Because you have the, your base along the bottom, okay? This would be the base height, which I will actually just go ahead and abbreviate H with a little B next to it, okay? So this is the height of your base. And then, of your height of the perimeter of the prism would be along this side. So a figure that has two parallel bases, two parallel bases. And today we're only going to be discussing rectangular prisms. And a rectangular prism has a base in the shape of a rectangle. So if you come to the prism that I have drawn for you, you can look at the base shape. And the base shape is going to run along the bottom of your prism. And so all of this here, notice that this is a rectangle. And it is parallel to another rectangle, the other base along the top side here. So this top piece and the bottom piece are going to be uh, your bases. And just like before, when we did two-dimensional figures, we said that the height is in between the bases. So the height of your prism is going to be the side that is between the two, those two parallel bases. Okay. And so for today, our formula to find the volume is going to be the base times the height of your base times the height of your prism. So you would take all three of those values and multiply them. Okay, let's look at this next example. We're going to find the volume of the rectangular prism using the formula that we just learned. So I want the height of the base times the height of the prism. So the first step when we're going to be doing these surface area problems is I want you to find the base. Okay, here is the base. And these first two values, the first two numbers that you multiply, come from that base. And all your bases today are going to be nice rectangles because we're doing rectangle prisms today. So notice that the base along the bottom here is 12 centimeters. This would be your base value, 12 times okay, the height of the base, which would be along this edge here, which is 10, the height of the base. And now we want to f identify the height of the prism. And the height of the prism is along this right side here because it connects both of your parallel bases. We already discovered the bottom base of the rectangle. And now we can look at the top base. Okay. And I know you might be thinking, well, there's rectangles on all sides of this. But the reason I teach it this way is because we're going to be doing triangular bases tomorrow. And a triangular base could look something like this, where notice how, ooh, there we go. So notice here how my bases will be triangles. So we're going to have to uh, keep that in mind in the future. So that's why I do it a little bit differently. Okay. 
uh, when I teach this instead of just length times width times height, but you can use that as well. So the height here of the prism is going to be uh, 6 centimeters. Now we're ready to multiply. Multiply 2 at a time. 12 times 10 is 120 times 60, or I'm sorry, times 6. And the volume will be 120 times 6 is 720 centimeters. And now remember we from our earlier discussion that we said that perimeter is going to give you uh, whatever your units are, area is units squared, and volume is going to be units cubed because I'm multiplying three different numbers. However, that exponent does only goes with the centimeters. It does not go to this 720 value. Let's look at this example with the Cheerios box. So the volume is going to be equal to our base times the height of the base times the height of the prism. Okay. And so the base here, notice I could draw it in here that this is, oh, I went the wrong way, it is going to be a rectangle uh, along the bottom here. And the bottom of this rectangle, your base here is 8. 8 is the side of the base multiplied by the base height, which is 3 and 1 fourth multiplied by the height of the prism again. The height of the prism is going to be how tall that prism is in between the two bases. Because if I have one rectangle on the bottom, notice that there's another rectangle up here that is the top of the cereal box. Okay, so we will multiply this now by 12 and 1 half. All right, so now let's go ahead and multiply. You know that in order to multiply fractions, we need to unmix them. So this is eight times. Remember to unmix your fractions. You need to multiply three times four, then add one. So multiply, then add. Three times four is 12, plus one is 13. And your denominator of four stays the same. Multiplied by 12 times two, which is 24, plus one is 25 over two. Now we want to simplify before we multiply. So I can simplify this 8 and this 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Can I simplify again? Sure, I have a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1 here. So that will make my multiplication a little bit easier. Now multiply all the top and then multiply across the bottom. So along the top I will have 13 times 25 divided by 1. 1 times 1 times 1, because remember this will be 8 over 1 here. And 13 times 25 would leave you with 325, and I do believe the units here were supposed to be inches cubed, 325 cubic inches. Example, this time we're going to find the missing dimension of the prism. So the volume is equal to the base times the height of your base times the height of your prism. Okay. In this example, you need to find, and I forgot to draw it in for you. I'll draw it in right now. Uh, the three-dimensional aspects. These will all be drawn in for you on your homework. Notice here we want to find the base rectangle, and here it is. And along the front of this will be the base, which is 6 times, now I have the height of my base, which runs along this edge here, which would be 4. And what I don't know is the height of the prism. I don't know how tall my prism is here between my two rectangular bases. So we'll just leave that as h. <coughs> we'll just leave that as h. If you don't know something, then you need to use a variable. Okay, and this problem does also tell us that the volume is going to be equal to 84 meters cubed. So if I know what the volume is, then what I can do is take that volume, 84 meters cubed, and plug them in all the way over here for volume. So I have, to complete my equation, I have 84 is equal to 6 times 4 times h. Now this is an equation that we can solve. Okay, so we solve equations using inverse operations on either side of the equal sign. So I want to draw, this is my equals bar, and notice here on this side that I have 6 times 4. Since they are on the same side of the equal sign, you simply need to multiply them. 6 times 4 is 24. So now I have 24h 
okay, is equal to, the only thing that you can put on an equals line here is the equal sign, is going to be equal to 84, okay. And then from here, we can divide, because now I have 24 times h, and the opposite of multiplying is going to, be to divide, okay. So we're going to divide both sides by 24. And so 84 divided by 24, you would get 3, and 12 over 24, which would simplify to 1 half. So 3 and 1 half is equal to your height, h, okay? Because 24 divided by 24 is 1, you're left with 1 h. So, and this isn't, which height is it? This is the height of the prism. So the height of your prism is 3 and 1 half. Okay, so please let me know which uh, type of instruction you like better. Uh, this one is a little bit getting used to writing with, uh, I have like a little pen here that I write with, and so it's a little different than I've ever done before. And um, so let me know if you need any help, please give me an email, call, or text. Bye.